Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome back to Podcastage. Today, I am trying to answer the age-old question of, does preamp noise actually matter? <laughs> to give you a summary, if you're using a condenser microphone, no, it doesn't. If you are just recording one or two tracks and uploading to YouTube, I don't think it matters. If you use a quiet microphone and use a lot of compression, it definitely starts to matter. If you record a lot of tracks, we're talking 8, 16, 32, and you leave them all open, yes, it definitely matters. If you are a stickler and you just want the best of the best, you want zero noise, yeah, it matters. But if you want to know more, go ahead and stick around because I have a whole bunch of tests for you. Number one, using condenser microphones. Preamp noise mainly becomes an issue when we are trying to run a quiet signal into the preamp and then amplify it. That's because when a low signal is going into the preamp, that low signal is much closer to the noise floor of the preamp, and when we crank up the gain, we're not just increasing the signal of the microphone we're sending into it, we're also increasing the inherent noise floor of the preamp. When we talk about microphones that output a low signal, we're typically referring to passive dynamics or passive ribbon microphones like the SM7B, the Bayer Dynamic M160, or the RE20, or any other number of microphones. The signal from these microphones is going to be much closer to the noise floor of the preamp. Condenser microphones, on the other hand, have a significantly higher output, and that means the signal that is being sent into the preamp is going to be much higher than the preamp's noise floor. For example, now I have the AT2020 on this stand. I'm going to level match that to the Shure SM7B on three different interfaces and let you hear the difference in the noise floor from a standard condenser to a quiet passive dynamic. This is the Audio-Technica AT2020 on the Focusrite 2i2 3rd Gen. And here is the sound of the SM7B running into the Focusrite 2i2 3rd Gen. This is a condenser microphone running through the Steinberg UR22C. Now we have the SM7B running into the Steinberg UR22C. And this is the AT2020 running through the Apogee Boom. And finally, we have the SM7B running directly into the Apogee Boom. Number 2. Recording one or two tracks to publish to social media. For this application, I don't think preamp noise really becomes an issue because if you're only recording one or two tracks, that's not enough tracks for the preamp noise to compound on itself and become a glaring issue. If you're curious about this, I do have a sample coming up later in this video to demonstrate how bad this can be. But the main reason I don't think it matters too much is the vast majority of content that's uploaded online is not consumed by critical listeners. It's it's consumed by people using cheap headphones, it's consumed by people listening through their phone speakers, listening through their laptop speakers, listening through their car stereo while they're driving down the highway at 150 miles per hour. Most of the time, your audience isn't going to hear it or care about it. Did you hear that? That sounded like a bell. That means it's time for another demonstration, so go ahead and play this portion of the video through your phone speakers and let me know in the comments if you can hear any of the preamp noise. Now for this demonstration, again, I have the 7B running through those same three audio interfaces. I will speak through each of the interfaces and then bring in a secondary track, which just has a dummy 150 ohm resistor on it. This is going to mimic having a second SM7B at the exact same gain level, and it will allow you to determine if the noise floor you get is acceptable or unacceptable to your standards. Now I am speaking into the SM7B on the Focusrite 2i2 3rd Gen, and I will bring in that secondary track so you can hear that additional noise floor and see if that is acceptable to you. This is without the second noise floor, and this is with the additional noise floor. Now I am on the Steinberg UR22C without a secondary noise floor. I have added in the second noise floor to mimic a second SM7B with no mixing. Here is how it sounds without the second noise floor. And here it is with the second 
noise floor. And finally, this is the 7B on the Apogee Boom without the second noise floor. And now I have added in a second noise floor with a 150 ohm resistor. Is it acceptable? Is it unacceptable? You tell me. Here is how it sounds without the second noise floor. And now I have added in that dummy noise floor. Number three, adding a bunch of compression to a quiet microphone. When you start to use compression, that is decreasing the dynamic range or the difference from the loudest part of your recording and the noise floor. Once you've done that, it makes your overall recording sound quieter, so you need to use makeup gain. And when you do that, it brings up the overall loudness of the recording, but also the noise floor. So I have used a low sensitive microphone recorded through some preamps. Let's see how different compression levels and different makeup gain levels impact the noise floor. This is the SM7B on the focus right with no compression. Here is the 7B on the Apogee Boom with no compression. This is the focus right with 3 dB of gain reduction. Now we have the Apogee Boom with 3 dB of gain reduction. Now this is the focus right with 6 dB of gain reduction. Here is the Apogee Boom with 6 dB of gain reduction. And if you're a maniac, this is the Scarlet with 12 dB of gain reduction. And for the maniacs out there, now I have the 7B into the Apogee Boom with 12 dB of gain reduction. Number four, recording a bunch of tracks. If you're using a quiet microphone or recording really quiet sound sources and you are capturing a lot of sound sources, 4, 16, 32, 64, 128, that's when the preamp noise can really start to compound on itself and get out of hand. That was a bell. It can get out of hand. And the bell indicates another demonstration. And for this final demonstration, again, we're assuming a worst case scenario, the SM7B running directly into the interface. For the additional tracks we'll be adding, there will be no room tone. It will just be that dummy 150 ohm resistor. And then we are assuming you are not doing any mixing. If there is no sound coming in on those tracks, you don't pull them down. You just leave every single track open. This is an absolutely worst case scenario. We'll start with the Apogee Boom. This is the SM7B. There is no additional track, and here is how it's sounding. Let's go ahead and bring in a second track. This is not big enough. Let's go ahead and add four total tracks, the microphone, and then three additional dummy tracks. Let's double that to eight tracks now. Here you go. Let's do a little bit of a jump up to 12 additional tracks now. Here is how it's sounding jump up to 16 tracks. This is 16 tracks, one microphone, 15 dummy tracks. And just because, why not? <laughs> Let's do 32 tracks. 31 dummy 150 ohm resistors. There you go. We're skipping the Steinberg and here is the focus right with one microphone running into it. I'll add that second dummy track. Here is how it sounds. Jumping up to four tracks total, three dummy, one microphone doubling it to eight tracks now, eight tracks, seven dummy, one microphone, jumping up to 12 tracks, one microphone, 11 dummies. Oh boy, we're up to 16, 16 tracks total. And you know what we do next? 32 tracks, bathe in the white noise, bathe in, bathe in the hiss. I'm assuming there's a bunch of hiss. 32 tracks is gonna be super noisy. I know somebody's going to misinterpret this video, so in conclusion, I am not making this video to advocate that everyone go out and buy the cheapest and noisiest preamp or interface they can find. I do think that preamp noise is important. I just don't think that preamp noise is the end-all be-all of a good sounding recording. I hear from people all the time who are sweating over a little bit of preamp noise in their recording when they should be focusing on more important stuff like the quality of their content. There is also much more important noise that you should be focusing on. Ambient noise, your room, the air conditioner, computer fans, cars outside, 
that is going to impact your recording significantly more than preamp noise. Sound Speeds or Sound Speeds made a great video on this topic, which I will link in the corner and in the description. Go check that out and focus on your ambient noise before sweating over the preamp noise. To summarize and wrap up, do not go out and buy the cheapest and noisiest preamp you can find. Do a bit of research and make sure you're buying the best and most capable interface and preamp that you can afford forward, but if a little bit of preamp noise makes it into your recording, I don't think it's the biggest deal. All right, that is it for this video. I hope it puts some of your minds at ease so you stop sweating over a little bit of preamp noise, a little bit of white noise in your recording. It is not the end of the world. This is the final video of the year, and I can't believe it. 2022 is coming to a close. I am sure Boomer Drew will have something to say about it next week. I personally, Bandrew has to say, I love you. Thank you so much for an amazing 2022. Ignore what Boomer Drew is going to say next week. That guy's a curmudgeon. I don't know why anybody listens to him. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, good give me a thumbs up, hated it, big ol' thumbs down. What do I say next? There's a video beneath me, click that. People over here support the channel and make videos like this possible, and I love you. I hope you have an amazing rest of your week and amazing rest of your year. I will talk to you in 2023. Bye-bye. Whoa. Whoa. Boo!